What's up guys? In this video, what I want to do is show you how to find the solution to a system of equations by graphing. Now, remember when we're looking to the solution of a system of equations, we're basically looking for where these two lines are going to intersect. So one of the main things we need to know how to do is how to graph them. Now for these three basic examples, we're going to have everything already written into slope intercept form, also known as Y equals a M X plus B. So the, really the main thing we're going to want to look for is one, how do we graph our line? How do we identify the Y intercept? How do we identify the slope? Then actually graphing the lines and then finding the intersection points. Once we find the intersection point, the value of X and Y is going to be our solutions to our equation. If it doesn't have an intersection point, that means they're like parallel lines, then there's no solution. Or if they're actually the exact same line, then we can say that's infinite many solutions. But a lot of times we're not going to know what it is until we actually start graphing. So let's go ahead and get started into these two equations and follow the process for graphing and finding the intersection point. So in this first example, I have Y equals a negative three X plus two. Now it's really important to understand that my slope, right? is the coefficient of X. So M is going to be a negative three over one. Now I'm putting it over one because remember slope represents the rise over the one, right? The change in Y over the change of X. Now it's really important to recognize that you can keep the negative as far as with the three, or you can put it with the one. You can also put it in front. Just whatever you do, do not put it in the top and then the bottom, because then you'd actually have a positive slope. A negative divided by negative is going to be positive. So I like to put it either in the numerator or in the denominator, because when we're graphing the line, we're going to want to either go in that positive or negative direction, which again, we'll get to in just a second. Now, when we're dealing with the Y intercept, that's going to be your constant in this case. My Y intercept or my B in this case is going to equal two. Now again, the Y intercept is where the graph crosses your Y axis. So remember when we have a X, Y axis, there's going to be your Y axis and this is going to be your X axis. Let's go ahead and graph this first line and then we'll get to the next line. So the first thing we always want to do is go ahead and plot your Y intercept. Now, again, this is at two. So that's going to be the value on the Y axis. You can also just go ahead and write this as a coordinate point of zero comma two. So there's our dot. Now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to follow our slope. Now we can follow our slope in the positive direction as well as in the negative direction. And what I mean by that is we could either go in either one of these. So remember, this is the change in Y over the change of X. So let's say we did it this first way, right? I did a negative three over one. So negative three would be going down three units. So one, two, three, right? The change in Y is negative. So means we're going to go down. The change in X though is going to be a positive one. So that's going to be over here to the right. We could also have done this one, right? Up three to the left one, right? Because the change in Y is positive three, but the change in X is going to be a negative one. So if I had to change Y, that'd be up three, one, two, three. And the change in Y is going to be a negative X. That means we're going to go to the left. Now you only need to do this once, but I want to connect these points here so you can see how this line is going to be created. It only needs two points to so go ahead and create your line. Now we need to graph a Y equals two X minus three. Now this one does not have a negative slope, so that's Good. So I can just rewrite that as a two over one. However, it is important to recognize that I can rewrite this as a two over one, or you could also rewrite this as a negative two over negative one. Now for these problems, I think we're going to keep everything simple, but I just want to make sure I bring that up because when we do get into more complicated examples, it is important to recognize that relationship. Now in this case, my B is going to be negative, right? Because you're minusing a three. So that again, that's going to be my Y intercept, which is a negative three, or I could rewrite this as a zero comma negative three. So again, the first thing you always want to do is go ahead and plot your Y intercept. So that is a zero along the X axis, right? And then a negative three along the Y. So one, two, three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to follow our slope. And here you kind of have two options, right? You could go to the right or you could go to the left. Well, why would I want to graph it to the left, right? The main goal here is to find where these two graphs intersect, right? Where are they crossing? So I'm going to follow the slope to the right. Or another way to say that is I want to follow it in the positive direction. Thankfully, that's the way this problem was originally drafted here, which is positive two over one. So if I go up two over one, that's going to take me to this point. And again, you only need guys two points to go ahead and draw your line. But again, I still will draw it at least continuing that same slope in the negative direction. And then hopefully you recognize here that this graph is going to intersect at the coordinate point of one comma negative one. And that is going to be the solution to this system of equations. Again, another way you could quickly check that is plug in a one for the X and plug in a negative one for the Y into both these equations. And that is going to make both of these equations true. Now, in the second example, we have some fractions for the slope, but again, that actually makes your life a little bit easier because you already know what the rise is as well as what the run is. The only kind of sometimes tricky thing is again, when you have a negative, like should you do it in the positive or you should do it in the negative direction? And again, it really kind of depends where you're going to find your solution. Let's go and go ahead and graph this first example. So I have Y equals a one third X minus six. Again, what you want to do is be able to identify the slope, which is your change in Y over your change in X. And then we also want to be able to identify our Y intercept, which is in this case is going to be a negative six. So first thing we're going to do is again, plot my B, which is going to be negative six. So I'm going to go down six units. So from the origin, go down six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Then I'm going to go ahead and follow my slope. Now I'm just going to use the positive version because it's much easier to go 
up one over three than it is to go down and to the left. If we don't need to include the negatives, why don't we just stick with our positive for a second? So I'll go up one, right? That's our rise over the run. So up one over three, one, two, three. So now I got two points and let's go ahead and connect those. Now let's go and move on to the next line. And again, identify the slope and the Y intercept. So Y is equal to a negative two thirds X minus three. Okay, so this one, my slope is going to be a negative two over three. Or you could also write that as a two over negative three. I think when you do have a negative slope, it is important to kind of give you both of those two options. So therefore you can kind of recognize which one you want to be able to follow, to be able to match up to your other line. And then my Y intercept in this case is going to be a negative three. So I'm gonna go down to my Y intercept of negative three, one, two, three. Now I don't wanna to go to the left, right? I wanna to go to the right. I wanna use the slope ratio where my X value is going to be positive. Well, in this case, the original slope is that, right? It has a negative two. So the change in Y is down two units. And then the change in X coordinates is gonna to be to the right three units. So one, two, three. And you can see that again, these two lines are going to intersect at this corner point. Now this one, I'm just gonna go and check. So this is gonna be at one, two, three. And then it's gonna be down one, two, three, four, five. So at three comma a negative five. And again, that is going to be the solutions to the system of these two equations, right? If you plug in a three and a negative five into both of these equations for your X as well as for your Y coordinates, then that's gonna satisfy both equations. Meaning both equations are going to be true. All right, in this last example, you can see again, we have two equations, y equals 2x minus 1 and y equals 2x plus 5. So again, we just want to be able to graph this and I want you to be able to kind of visually see what's important about this graph because the slopes here are going to be the same thing, right? You could say m is going to be 2 and b equals negative 1. In this case, m is equal to 2 and b is equal to 5. So again, let's just do one graph at a time. So if I go down to negative 1 and then I go ahead and follow the slope, right, which is technically a 2 over 1, meaning I'm going to go up 2 to the right one, right? And now let's go ahead and connect those two points. And you can see our first graph is gonna look like this. Now the next graph here has a Y intercept of five. So one, two, three, four, five. Now again, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go up two over one, or you could say down two to the left one. You only need two points, but again, I'm going to the left because I kind of ran out of space here. But the main thing I want you to be able to see here is these lines look like they are actually never going to cross. They look like what we call parallel lines, right? And again, we can actually confirm their parallel lines because the slopes are exactly the same. Since they're parallel, their slopes are the same, they're never going to intersect. Therefore, this is an example of no solution, meaning there is no coordinate points that's gonna satisfy both of these equations. It's just never gonna happen. And again, that kind of like makes sense. Like what number could you multiply by two and subtract one, which would be exactly the same as multiplying by two and adding five. It's just not gonna happen. So always look out for when you have the same slope but different y-intercept, that is gonna create a situation where there is no solution. But hopefully in this video, you got at least a good foundation for graphing a system of equations and finding the solution, which is the intersection point. Now, if you're looking to pass a certain test, quiz, or class, then you definitely want to check out my next video where I go over the most common types of problems that you can expect to see from your teacher. Now, if you'd like just some more examples of graphing basic systems of equations, or you'd like to go and take a look at the notes and resources I offer my students inside my courses, then go ahead and check out the links and information I have for you down below. Cheers.